Hello, I'm Jerry, and in this video tutorial, we're going to go over how to make the Chrome extension notifications clickable so that the user is redirected to the global entry website whenever the earliest appointment that meets their criteria is found. In the Chrome Notifications API documentation, we can use an event to listen to when the user has clicked the notification. We don't have a button on our notification. We just expect the user to click the entire general area of the notification. So for that specific event, we'll look at the on clicked event listener. All we have to do is chrome dot notifications on clicked and then just our regular callback that we've used with all of our other Chrome API listeners. Back in our handle notification JavaScript file, let's create the Chrome notifications on clicked listener. We'll give it a fat arrow function. And this is how we'll know if the user has clicked a notification of ours. Now what we need to do is send the user to a different tab with the URL of our choosing. In our case, this would be the global entry website. We can find out how to do this by using the Chrome.tabs API documentation. And under methods, you'll see create here. If you click in create, it says creates a new tab. Looking at the create documentation, there are two Two arguments. One is create properties and the other is the callback. We don't really care about the callback as we don't really need to know anything about the tab that's been created. What we do need though is the URL. This will be the URL for the global entry website. Whenever the user clicks on the notification, they'll get redirected to that website. And the other field is the active boolean, which basically means if that new tab that we've created should become the active tab. We want that to happen. Unfortunately, it already defaults to true, so we don't have to specify that whenever we use the create function. Function. Let's write in URL with a colon here, and then inside of the double quotes, we'll paste the URL in here for the global entry website. Let's give this a run. I already have a couple of dates here. I've got the Tucson location ID selected as well. I'm going to hit save and start and then forward to when the first notification shows up. Wonderful. We've got our first notification. If we click on it, it works and it takes us to the global entry scheduling website. We've got the click listener working for the notification and it's successfully redirecting the user to the global entry website. But there's still some work that we have to do for the notification where we need to show what time zone the appointment timestamp is being shown in. And we have to add some additional logic here so that the notification doesn't show up repeatedly. If we found an appointment, we show a notification for it. But if that same appointment is available the next minute, then we show another notification. And we pretty much continue showing notifications on and on and on. A better way of handling repeated notifications would be to just show the one interview that's available and cache that date to confirm that we don't show that specific interview slot again. If an earlier interview slot opens up, then we can show that. Or if the interview slot that was available got booked, then we would show the next ones up in line. I think we also should show the amount of interviews that are open. If we found one interview that matches the user's criteria, then we can show that. But if there are more than one, if there are maybe you know, 20 or 15 other interviews, we want to show that count. We don't want to show every single interview. That would be too much. What we want to show instead Instead, is we found this interview at the earliest timestamp and an additional 20 other interview slots open that match your criteria. But before we do that, the way this is structured right now is not ideal for our situation. Back in the fetch open slots file, this function is supposed to be purely responsible for making the API call and returning it. But instead, it's making the API call and then sending it off to a notification handler. In reality, this should just make the API call and then return that data. What happens to that data and where it gets dispatched to should be handled in the background.js. This is kind of our intermediary, our controller, so to speak, that is supposed to dispatch these events to the appropriate piece of logic. What we should do instead is this should return the response, but it's a little tricky because as you can tell, we're attaching callbacks all the way down here and it's kind of difficult to return callback data. A solution to that problem is for this function to return a promise in and of itself so that whenever we call fetch open slots in background.js, we can do our own then callbacks here so that whenever that data is returned, we can then throw it to the handle notification and this can create the notification for us. In the fetch open slots, I'm going to transform this into a promise. We can do that by basically just doing return new promise. This will have two params of resolve and reject. I'm going to move this ending brace down here. Resolve means that we can return that piece of data that we got and reject 
basically means that you received an error so that it can be caught in the dot catch whenever the fetch open slots function is called. We'll keep the data dot filter and what we'll do is we'll remove handle notification and resolve that piece of data. In the dot catch we will console log the error and reject. Let's clean up the import statement. Fetch open slots is now a promise that's returning to us the data. So now we can access that data by using the then callback with the data param and we can just do something in here. Now we have to handle this and we're going to do that that below we'll write handle open slots that accepts the parameter of open slots and let's call this in the dot then callback in here we have to verify if the list of open slots is valid meaning it's not null undefined or an empty list and we also have to verify that we haven't shown this open slot to the user already so first we will check the falsy value then we'll check that there exists some element in the array and now we also have to figure out if we've already shown this interview slot to the user we can determine that by verifying if we've shown this time slot so we can save the time slot in the code like we kind of do with cached prefs up here and then verify if we've ever shown this specific timestamp before. So let's write a variable called first appointment timestamp. We'll set that to null. Null meaning we have never shown this before. So it has a null value in the beginning. Down in handle open slots, what we'll do is compare the first element in open slots and we have to pull out the timestamp. Then we have to determine if it's not equal to the first appointment timestamp that we saved above. So if all of this succeeds, then we know that we have a new timestamp. So we've got to set that first appointment timestamp at the top to this new timestamp. Then from here, we can create the notification. One additional thing that we have to do is to clear the first appointment timestamp whenever the user hits the on stop. So we'll just write first appointment timestamp and set that to null. Whenever the user hits the save and start button, we'll run through the job. And whenever we get our first appointment, we set that to our cached appointment in the code. And if the additional open slots returned continue to have that same timestamp in the array at the top of the list, then we don't show the user a notification. Now that we have this piece of logic in here, let's go back to handle notification. And in here, we don't really need this anymore. We can remove this. And now instead of handle notification, let's do export const of create notification and rename handle notification.js to create notification.js. At the top here, let's import create notification. And at the bottom, let's create that notification. One thing I want to do before I run this is I'd like to call this immediately whenever the user hits save and start. Right now, the way it works is we create the alarm, then we wait some period of minutes for the on alarm listener to work. What I think we should do is once we create the alarm, we should immediately run the first job in here. So we can fire that API call without having to wait uh, an additional one minute or more in the beginning. Let's create another function here called open slots job. And I'm going to cut and paste these two lines into there. Then let's call open slots job within the on alarm listener. And let's call it within the create alarm method. Back in the Chrome extension window, let's run the job. I have chosen Nogales, Arizona because Tucson seemed to have run out of appointments. So I'm going to hit save and start. And as you can tell, we immediately run the first job. And so we get that notification really quickly. And if we click on it, it opens up the website as expected. Another thing we want to do is customize the message the notification is using. Instead of just saying found an open interview at the timestamp, let's also write what time zone the location is using for the time. At the top here, I will pass in the prefs. We will pull out the TZ data from the prefs. To refresh your memory, we are pulling the TZ data from the API call and then saving that locally. We set it as an attribute on the option. So we have the location ID and also the data-tz value, which is corresponding to the tz value. And whenever the user hits the start button and if all the fields are valid, we save that value as tz data. So that's going to be part of our prefs object. So back here in create notification, we are pulling out the tz data and inside of the string, let's write tz data time zone and let's put that in parentheses. So we have the active appointments 
timestamp, and we also have the time zone data. Let's also include the count of additional appointments that are available. So if there are more than one active appointments, we can just say found an open interview at XYZ timestamp in time zone and 50 additional open interviews, something like that. So we have to pass that additional count in here. Before the prefs argument in the create notification signature, I'm going to introduce another argument named number of slots. To be consistent with the slots naming, I'm going to rename this first variable to open slot and I'll rename active appointment dot timestamp to open slot dot timestamp. Number of slots will just be the total number of elements in the array. That can be one, it can be more than one. And we are going to use this to determine what kind of message we want to show in the notification. Back in the background file, let's pass in open slots dot length. Let's create a message depending on how many slots are available. So let's initialize an empty message string. The logic will be if number of slots is greater than one, we'll set message to this existing message, which I'll copy here. And we will append and dollar sign braces number of slots, additional open interviews. The number of slots should have one subtracted from it because we're already showing the earliest open slot here. So we want to show the remainder minus the one that we've already displayed here. In our else clause, we will just set the message variable to our original string. And then we can just remove the colon and just leave the message string. Make sure you hit refresh. Let's hit save and start. And there we go. Found an open interview at January 30th and 722 additional open interviews. So quite a lot of open slots available at this location in the America Phoenix time zone. I'm going to leave this open and running so we can test if notifications will show for the same timestamp. All right, and I'm back. As you can tell, we ran this three times, once in the initial start and then two on alarm code calls and we have not seen the notification yet. I'm going to hit stop. And now that we hit stop, back in our handle on stop, we should have nulled out the first appointment timestamp, which means that if we run this again, we should see the same notification. So let's go back to the Chrome extension window and let's run this job again. And there you go. We see the notification again, just as expected. So we've done quite a lot today. We figured out how to change an API call from just a simple then chain of clauses to promise so that we could get data back. We figured out how to make the notification clickable. We added dynamic data to the message. We figured out how to set the time zone and the total number of active open slots available to be booked. And we performed some code cleanup as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe so I can continue to make more of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jerry.